Hi, welcome back to the channel. Was not planning a sweaty selfie, but this saying became much more appropriate today. You're going in three, two, one, go! So I just did a workout um, three times half marathon mile repeats, half marathon pace mile repeats, and I was not feeling it. And as I'm starting my warm up, you know, I have my phone going, a video, and I see a little notification at the top. Uh, my sister shared a, uh, a mouse gen post that they had just made. Pulled it up while I was warming up. They released the artwork themes for Dopey. So. I was really excited about that. And then I looked over and saw this quote. Today's just an ordinary day, but I'm planning for something extraordinary. So while I get cleaned up now, enjoy this little musical montage of the Dopey, or not, well, it's not just Dopey, but I'm excited about Dopey, Marathon Weekend 2025 artwork themes. So I just gave the dogs a bath each that got first and I did Sadie and I made the mistake of letting her outside when I was done because I thought she needed to go to the bathroom. No, she went and rolled in the mulch. Sadie, I just gave you a bath and now you're dirty. He's so handsome and he just, I don't know if y'all know this, he just got out of some heart surgery. Yeah. I saw that on his Instagram. Didn't he get like an elephant heart? Like yeah. transplant? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I heard anyways. Anyways, if y'all will welcome the one, the only, Jeremy Cam. I know that I need to listen to all of the thunder you wish. I still believe in your truth Even when I don't see I still believe So we're getting ready to go camping Sadie stole a hat <laughs> You wanna go camping, sweet girl? Let's go! Let's go camping! Pulled into the campground and it's raining, just enough to be annoying. Got my co-host. So camping didn't work out as you uh, saw, it was raining and that was our first time pulling out the RV for the season. It had a leak. So because we were um, RVing camping so close to home, we just packed it up the next day, didn't do the hike brought the RV to my husband's shop so we could start drying out and we could have uh, some of his employees figure out where the leak com was coming from. And so they did. But uh, before that, you also saw we got to go to Jeremy Camp and that was so much fun. And uh, yeah, so I'm kind of bummed we didn't get to go on our hike, but we got some other things coming up in the next week or two that um, will be fun too. We can get out, get outside a little bit. Today, <laughs> It decided to be cold again, so we ran on the treadmill, but, and I, you know, just finished, so she likes to give me kisses when I'm done. So this week for Redeemed, we have Redeemed by Grace. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. That's from Ephesians chapter 2. Uh, Bill Bright says, God's grace is just the right amount of just the right quality arriving as if from nowhere at just the right time. Uh, next is redeemed and content. But godliness with contentment is a great gain. Uh, that's 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. 
The contentment that the world offers is fleeting and incomplete. Thankfully, the contentment that God offers is all-encompassing and everlasting. Um, it's like I said before in one of the other weeks. Um, everything in this world is so very temporary, but everything about God is everlasting, eternal, lasts forever. Happiness depends less on our circumstances than upon our thoughts. Uh, Charles Stanley says, Real contentment hinges on what's happening inside us, not around us. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me because I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's from Matthew chapter 11. Elizabeth Elliot says, I believe that in every time and place it is within our power to acquiesce in the will of God and what peace it brings to do so. And our favorite Corey Ten Boom, father and mother lived on the edge of poverty and yet their contentment was not dependent upon their surroundings, their relationship to each other and to the Lord gave them strength and happiness. Redeemed to serve. Because you've been redeemed, your life has purpose. That purpose is often revealed through service to God and others. Let whatever your path, whatever your calling, whatever your passion, whatever it is that you feel led to do, center around serving God. If they serve him obediently, they will end their days in prosperity and their years in happiness. And that's from Job. E. Stanley Jones says, you can judge how far you have risen in the scale of life by asking one question. How wisely and how deeply do I care? To be Christianized is to be sensitized. Christians are people who care. And C. H. Spurgeon says, no life can surpass that of a man who quietly continues to serve God in the place where providence has placed him. Redeemed and thankful. Make Thanksgiving a habit, a regular part of your daily routine. When you slow down and express your gratitude to the one who made you, you enrich your life and the lives of those around you. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God and Christ Jesus for you. 1 Thessalonians. K. Arthur says, The act of Thanksgiving is a demonstration of the fact that you are going to trust and believe God. Elizabeth Elliot says, It is always possible to be thankful for what is given rather than to complain about what is not given. One or the other becomes a habit of life. And the last one, redeemed and humble. Clothe yourselves with humility towards one another because God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. That's from 1 Peter. We who have been redeemed have a profound reason to be humble. We have been refashioned by Christ Jesus and that salvation came not because of our own good works but because of God's grace. Uh, we're God made and Christ saved. Let another praise you and not your own mouth, a stranger and not your own lips. And that's from Proverbs 27. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is perfected in weakness. Therefore, I will most gladly boast all the more about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may reside in me. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Do nothing out of rival rivalry or conceit, but in humility consider others as more important than yourselves. Philippians chapter 2. And Billy Graham says, Jesus had a humble heart. If he abides in us, pride will never dominate our lives. So that's it for week six. We're about done. We have five more left in this book. Um, we have one more week. Oh, hey! <laughs> um, yeah, next week. Let's see what's happening next week. Oh, we are going back down to our lake house. Scout's super excited. So I'll be able to do a little bit of warmer running. I mean, it just seems to be staying consistently warmer down there. Um, but I, I, think, I do think we're gonna get some, some thunder so I might have to do a couple on the treadmill. So we'll finish up Redeemed next week and I'll talk about what's coming down the line. We got Dopey registration coming up. So it's like everything that I've been dreaming about up to this point could very easily be broken if I don't get in. So I'm just really hoping that I do. I hope everyone's good. I hope um, you had a great Palm Sunday and are looking forward to Easter just like I am. Always remember that you are God's masterpiece. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you next week. Sadie, why did you bail? You were you were my co-host. <laughs>